Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm making this envelope using book pages and scraps. It has a strong focal point, this butterfly, and sewing around the sides. I've used handmade vintage papers to create this collage effect. I'll show you all the steps to make it and share lots of tips as we go. It's a style that's rather new to me, like the pocket I made last month. I'm enjoying learning new techniques and feeling my confidence grow. And this is really the purpose of my channel, playing with paper, learning, feeling good. So I have some exciting news today, something for your creative journey. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, I'll tell you more about them later. And I have something really exciting to give away. But first let's make those lovely grungy papers and collage the envelope cover. The key supplies that I'm using today are, in the first instance, a lovely page from this Spanish dictionary. It's relatively thin paper and quite large. I'll tell you why I'm choosing what I'm choosing as supplies and how I'm doing things as we go through the process. I'm going to use a, an ink pad for stamping and I'm going to make some little grungy papers because these are quite key to making up this collage envelope. I like to put some of my own handmade papers into a project where possible. So I'll show you how to make that. They're really, really quick and really easy and a lot of fun. I'll be using some paint sticks. You can use your own regular paint. You can use an ink pad. You can use substitute products for lots of the components of this envelope. I'm going to use gesso because that will help make the envelope and the papers become just a little bit more robust and rigid and we get that lovely crinkly effect and I have a couple of little stamps that I'll add for extra decoration towards the end. So let's get on and first make up the base of the envelope which is incredibly easy, no template required. Then I'll very quickly show you the grungy papers and then we'll collage the envelope cover. And my first step to making this envelope is to put some score lines in my relatively thin piece of paper and for this I'm going to use a little wooden scoreboard. Now you don't actually need to have one of these, you can just make marks on your paper and fold so you really don't have to have a template. What you want to do is put a fold line on either of the long sides to begin with. So I'm using the first groove in this little wooden board and I'm relatively gently making a score mark because I've chosen a piece of paper that is quite thin and the reason I've done that is we are going to do quite a bit of collage of papers on top and I didn't want the underlying piece to be really thick to begin with so it makes life easier when we come to sew it and when we come to do subsequent folding. So I have a fold on the left hand side and the right hand side and the gap here is let's say about a centimetre and a half in my envelope but you just need a small amount to make some of the flaps that will fold in and then I'm going to do a score line in my board at groove number three top and bottom. Now for whatever you're doing whatever size of envelope you want to create the key to the fold lines top and bottom are that when you come to fold the top and the bottom you want the top piece to overlap the bottom by I think in this project a couple of centimetres. So whatever size piece of paper you have, and maybe let's work from the paper that we've got rather than seeking a particular size, you want to have a fold at the bottom and a fold at the top so that they will overlap by about an inch or a couple of centimetres. And that's the difficult bit of envelope scoring done. So just to make life really easy, I suggest at this stage we do go back over and just crease those out. Let's get some lovely little creases in because this really does help us at subsequent steps. The dictionary page is a relatively large one to start with and we can see it's more of a rectangle so not a square but to be frank any size book page will work for this. What I suggest you do is choose a relatively large page because I do think that when you're finished with the image you want to see a goodly amount of collage behind and I think it's so dramatic and really exciting to have 
a good strong focal point on front and that on the front and that means let's have plenty of real estate to fill I don't know which one you prefer this one's a little bit smaller but I think this size envelope the finished one which is probably about six inches by four inches about the size of an index card that that seems to work so let's put our page aside and let's just have a quick bit of fun making up some of the grungy papers which really do add something special to this collage this really grungy distressed effect For this part of the process to make a whole collection of these lovely grungy slightly micified pages which you could use in lots of different projects I've chosen I quite like that one it's gone all leaky I've chosen a rather colourful ink pad and I thought I would do this to ring the changes with the vintage shades that we often use in our projects so I'm going to use a Collider Colour ink pad today it's called Raised Ro Rainbow Dye Ink Pad in the shades Royal Satin and it is in the shades because this one has five different colours in it so it's a bit of a special ink pad and what I'm able to do with this ink pad is press there and hey ho magic all of the spaces disappear which means that I can get a variety of colours on a stamp I'll choose which way up I want it to go I tend to try to get the darker colours at the bottom I just like it that way and what I can do is very carefully just ink my little stamp here with a range of colours obviously when you're finished with the stamp you separate them so they don't all leak into each other and I'm going to use these shades of purples and reds, so slightly surprising colours perhaps, on an old book page and I'm going to make them leak into each other by adding quite a bit of water to begin with to the book page. So I am going to take the stamp, which is still quite damp, and just maybe not even perpendicular or square to the page put that on pressing down firmly and what I've done is not only wet the page but I have wet the page with a mixture of my mica powders and water and the three that I used are bronze these are absolutely gorgeous they look like little nail polishes let me show you a some amount of powder in there I hope that's slightly visible all I do is mix up some colours. I can't possibly use just one colour. There's a bit of al alchemy happens and childish behaviour, let's be honest. So I mix those into my pump and add about an inch of water to three teaspoons on this teeny tiny spoon. Show you that. And what that allows the paper to do is not only be wet but have a degree of slightly bronzified, goldified shimmer about the page and you can see what's been happening the ink is just melging and merging and I found when I had an experiment making these which you can see I've also done in an ombre ink pad with oranges and greens you can get some gorgeous effects and really just go to town using up your book pages so I've wet that one first and then stamped on it and because the page was relatively wet and quite porous so it is old book pages that I'm using here it has started to run now that is quite bold colour and if you wanted to tone it down what you can also do is dampen your page and can you see there is a little bit of colour in this one there is a little bit of that shimmery bronze you can also Let's stamp one more time Try and get it the right way up. Stampity stamp. Down we go. And then you can go back in with your spray and just use the power of that spray again on the top. And I think these work really well. Be quite bold because we're not actually after just telling you the why again we're not actually after a crisp image from the stamp I think we're after a little suggestion that there was a picture there was an image but something about a a change and a mutation as the ink flows creating a slightly different effect so 
my suggestion is make up a few of these pages, have a play, set them out on your desk and let them dry and then maybe do them in a few different colours. Of course you may not have an ombre effect ink pad but I th really think this would work incredibly well still with just a single colour. So if you don't have the mica maybe just try water so wet the page, stamp and then maybe spray again on top. So I'll set this one aside and I'll choose from one of the many that I've made before and this will be part of the collage that we put on the front of our envelope. So having stamped my little grungy papers I can choose one of these and let's say we choose the one with the gorgeous deep greens and deep navy blue. I've got a beautiful thread of pink which moves into orange here and it has merged and melded a bit. If I'm going to use that one then in order to choose the papers to collage I want to pick my focal point now. So I have cut out some butterflies and I know that many of you guys don't necessarily have digits. These are from Tracy Fox and I do think they're beautiful and I'm going to choose, oh I've got a getting carried away. I like the pink of that with the pink. I like the blue of that with the blue. Maybe I'll use this one, it's nice and bold. I did want to share quickly a couple of suggestions for alternatives for your butterflies because we don't all have digits and sometimes we have to use what we have, we have to use book pages. I buy a lot of my old books either online on eBay or in a local charity shop and this is one that I found which is going to be subject to the cutter soon, my scissors are going to make it. So lovely images that we can cut out, some are smaller than others, I really like that page, look at the gorgeous, the gorgeous variety of black and white and then a stronger orangey red, just beautiful, it's lovely just even looking through these and we're very lucky here in the UK to have this wildlife but maybe you could have a look in a local thrift store and see what you've got in terms of wildlife books. So you could cut an image out there. When I started my YouTube journey I made a lot of use of this lovely really old nature book. It has matte pages and it's a fairly common book in a series. I've got another one, a geography one. Beautiful pages with lots of wildlife pictures that could be used and some of them are black and white, some of them are colour. I've saved from this one a gorgeous page with again beautiful butterflies that I can cut out and use in a project. So maybe search around in the books that you've got and see if you can find something to cut out of a book page if you don't have access to a digi. Having chosen my butterfly that means that I can then pick from a variety of papers to stick on here. We just have fun with a little bit of method, I'll talk you through it. We're going to cover this with little pieces of paper and I'm going to add a little bit of texture and paint on top and that's what really adds this lovely aged effect. This is my little pack of papers that I'm going to choose from. There's one of the pages I've used in a previous envelope and I will pull some out maybe thinking about a little bit of the colour that's in the grungy page that we made. So although I like to have a relatively random selection, I like variety, I also have an eye out for other pages that will go with a bit of a theme so it's not completely random. In this little collection I've got stripes, I've got a more sophisticated set of colours, teal, so that might work quite well. I've got a scrapbook page, I've got some book papers, nice big font, I've got a little bit of matte paper, a bit of more grungified book page, the offcut from a digi, relatively thin paper, uh, and some other little patterns. So use what you have, maybe pull a few out, I think I can set this aside. I've just seen a little bit of gold. I can't resist. Maybe let's have these on the left hand side and we can start our collage. 
There are two specific pieces of paper that I want to incorporate to this collaged envelope. One is a piece of music paper and of course the other is the grungy paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this goes on. So the little bit of method that I wanted to share. Then I'm going to add my grungy coloured paper and then really it's a free for all. And I've found that having just a tiny bit of focus in putting the collage on the piece of dictionary page just gives me what I want. What I'm looking for is a degree of emphasis on the bottom right, the focal point in the top left. And maybe this is a better example. This was the second one I did where I was learning. I'm going to add the grungy paper to the bottom right with some of the music paper and a bit more of the grungy paper to the top left. And then after that, everything else is just fun. So let's have a go at that. I put some matte paper behind for protection. I've got some relatively wet glue and I'm taking pieces that are like, like the story goes, neither large nor small, something in the middle. And the first thing I'm going to do is get, with glue just in the middle, not at the edges, get that onto the bottom right of the what will be the front of my envelope. So I'm going to position it down here and I'm making sure that the piece of collage goes over where the folds are. So remember we folded the envelope piece, the dictionary page, in a way that would be really clear to see where the ridges are, where the, where the folds are. I want a line and piece of movement to come up here. So again, I'm going to just tear my little piece of grungy paper in a particular way. So I know I need about half of the page. And what I'm going to do is tear the top left hand corner of that. Stick that on the side for the moment. So I've got what's looking quite like a relatively white piece of book page against our finished item here. I've got something with colour on it. So let's have glue on the back, in the middle, not all the way to the edges. It's our collage method here and it helps us to deliver a better effect because it gives us the opportunity to still do lots of unders and overs of the pieces. And I'm going to put that on top of my book page so it's going to be roughly in the bottom right hand corner of our front of envelope. So if I show you the fold will be there and the fold will be there, you can see it's positioned roughly to the bottom right. I'm going to take the spare piece that came from the top left and I'm going to put that so that it will be visible at the top left when we fold in. So again, a bit of glue in the middle and really this is the hardest bit if this is hard at all. So let's just make sure we put that where it will be visible. I'm overlapping the creases so I want these pieces of collage not to finish where we're going to fold. I want them to come over and that I think helps with the effect with the edges. It also helps make the envelope a bit more robust and that is the technical bit done. All I'm going to do now is take little bits of paper, any style, and do our usual filling in the gaps. So glue in the middle, not too much thinking. Use what you have, use what you enjoy. Revel in all the different varieties of paper that we have available. And maybe use up some of your goodies, use up some of your book pages and make space for new things so that we can always stay quite fresh in what we do. I've got some scrapbook paper here. One thing I am going to do is, as well as allow the pieces of collage to go up and down, I'm not particularly worried about things being the right way up on the front of this envelope. I'm taking these pieces all the way to the edge. In fact, I think I'm going to cover up this straight line, get that under there. And I like the fact that a couple of relatively green pieces are next to each other. One of my tips, and this is really personal preference, is to think about which way up you would like your collage pieces to be on the flap of the envelope. So obviously when we fold the flap, it's going to be the other way up. So let me show you. 
because I don't think I got it right or rather I did it differently on the first one. So this one you can see the text on the book page that I added is the wrong way up because when I collaged I collaged and it was the right way up. I'll show you that. So just here. So if you do have text on the flap of the envelope and if you want it to be the right way up when you fold it when you're collaging this piece here you might want to think about the text being that way so facing in the opposite direction when I did this one I actually remembered to do it so you can see the little bit of music paper down here appears to be the right way up and I've got some text here on a book page and that's the right way up I think it's a little bit nicer that way but I'm not sure it really matters too much lovely piece of scrapbook paper I think I might use quite a bit of that and maybe he can be something that goes on our flap then we can see he's the right way up how good is collage how great is it for using up our stuff but just relaxing and having fun it's relatively new to me but I'm learning I absolutely love it piece of large font book page a child's book and I use a lot of children's books when I actually make the pages of a junk journal and I'm going to remember again for this one to go effectively the wrong way up as you're facing it at the moment so that can go on there and when we come to sew this which it is optional sewing and using your sewing machine is optional for this you can do this with glue and I wouldn't want my projects to be so complicated that only a few of us can do it but perhaps on this occasion sewing it does make it stronger and it's something I have fun doing but have a go without because I still think that will work take a bit of that across the bottom there a little bit of the sides of this will get cut off when we trim the flaps to make the envelope and I'll show you how I do that but to make life really easy I'm not going to worry about thinking about where the flaps are going to be cut I am just going to get some of this collage down I think that can be an under over too so that can go down there and it's really easy as you can see to build up the collage not too much method required just a little bit of fun As we're filling the final little bits of gap obviously I'm using smaller pieces so you can just literally use up all of those little scraps and I've got a hodgepodge of colours here some of these have got cream in them some of them have got a white background some of them are text some of them are pictures some of them are scrapbook papers some of them are book pages some of them are digi they're not all stuck down yet, I'm not worried about that. What I am going to do is just trim off around so that I can see the edge of the book page. I'm 
Now we're back to a collaged page. I have got rather a lot of flaps here, so I will take those down a little, but I'm not too worried about all of them because I'm going to sew around it and that will hold some of them down. So just a little bit of remedial action, maybe even using my glue stick at this stage if you think you really need some strength of glue. Just go around and add a dab of glue under some of these errant pieces that are wanton, that are sticking up. And that is the base of our envelope, both folded originally and then we have collaged it. What we need to do now is take the colour down, add the grungy effect and add the special layer. Using what we have, let's make the most of the supplies, you substitute where that works for you. I'll show you what I use and hopefully give you some inspiration. So to grungify this little beauty I'm going to use a palette, some water, I have some acrylic paints and I've chosen as you can see some relatively dark grungy colours. So this one is an Arteza acrylic colour, a tube in the shade Raw Umber. I also have Deep Yellow and I have Gold and I'm going to use these to colour the gesso a little bit. So I think this possibly could work as well with watercolours and with any other medium that you have that you can splosh on here and take the colour down. So I'll take a bit of my gesso from my now much loved and used tub and I'm going to use a sponge to get colour on here and that will really help the paper to become a little bit thicker and have that distressed effect, to have that little crinkle that so many of us love. So I'll get some of the gesso into my palette with plenty of water and it's time to break out some of these colours so I'll just put a little bit of a couple of these into one of the recesses. Obviously the colours that you choose to add pigment to your gesso are going to make a bit of a difference to the effect you get on the envelope. So these are relatively dark colours and these are the ones I used on this really quite deep yellowy age, very vintage. I use slightly lighter colours and more watery on this one and you can see it hasn't come out quite so golden. So I am going to start with start with what I've learnt works which is wet my paper. So I'm using my mica, you could use just water if you want to. I quite like this because I end up again with a shimmery effect and I'm going to go in with some of my gesso and pick up a bit of the colour and this is where we really have the fun. Mix that into the gesso, let's have a bit of the gold, not worrying too much about the proportions but I end up with a, a lovely deep greeny brown colour. Keeping my brush super wet, I'm not after a really thick gesso effect. I'm going to get that on here and then I'm going to use a sponge to spread it out so that I don't get sweeping lines from a right to left movement, I'm right handed, but a sweeping line from a brush. I had a bit of fun doing this earlier in the week. Okay, a little bit of variety, get that on. That's quite a lot of colour on there and I have a, this is what I used this week and you can see it actually it was on a, a red stick, actually came off, but I think I can still get away with dabbing that over. So have fun, spread out that colour and I would say think about covering up any of the really white pieces that you can see. Don't worry about it being even, in fact uneven is fine. And it's just a quick process. I can see some of the shimmery mica showing through and it will go a bit paler when it dries as well so that's something else to remember as well. So now I've got something that is very different from those white tones of paper that we started with. I've got something which is unique, it was fun. I'm going to let that dry or you can dry it off. And then I am going to add just a little bit more decoration before we sew it and then do some final embellishments. It's really easy. I've dried it off with a heat gun and at this stage when you are full of collage, you've done the grungy paint effect on the top, I think you'll start to see the real magic of this. It takes on a different form. 
I've got that wrinkly, crinkly sound, lovely texture, gorgeous colours. All I need to do is refold where we had those original folds, so at this point we're glad that we made them. And then I'm going to trim off the flaps where I want them to be cut off so that I can see the shape of the envelope when we come to sew around it. So just be gentle. Although I have tried to, to dry this, inevitably it's still going to be slightly damp. If you've got patience, do a few at a time and set them aside and then maybe come back to them. So I'm folding gently and you can see sometimes some of the little bits of paper haven't quite caught. So I can pick my glue stick up at this stage and just do any remedial measures to get that down. And maybe at this stage a glue stick is a better option. Very grungified, I think, this one. So I fold at the top and I refold at the bottom. And I'll just test to see whether I can see those and I'll do my trimming. So yes, that's clearly showing where the folds are. So I'm going to trim off the easy peasy method for making envelopes. I'll maybe show you on this side. So at the bottom of the envelope, this will be my bottom flap. This will be my top. I'm going to take a flap off here. I'm going to trim by starting just to the left of this vertical fold and going up to the intersection of the vertical and the horizontal. And I'm going to take out just a little bit more than all of that flap. So if I say that again, it's just to the inside of the fold, go up to where the folds cross, turn it on its side and then take out just a tiny bit more than where the fold is horizontally. And that gives us a good piece for sewing for our bottom flap. The top is similar, but I like to go a little bit further in. So I'm going to go a little bit further in to the left and maybe take out from a centimetre beyond that vertical crease and then a snip out here again maybe about half a centimetre beyond the horizontal crease and just try to mirror it. I don't measure it. I'm focused on where the intersection is of the folds and I've snipped that out. So you can see these pieces are two sloping lines, not a rectangle. And that gives us the shape so that I can take my sewing machine and do any form of stitching around. I think key to this is a running stitch or whatever pattern you want to do around the front. And I'm going to do a flap and I'm going to do this flap as well. So I'll set up my sewing machine and I'll just talk you through the Skillshare giveaway as I do that and also show you what I'm doing. So as I sew around the cover I can share that exciting news. The sponsor of this video Skillshare is an online learning community with literally thousands of inspiring classes for creative people like you and me. You can join classes on topics such as book binding, making ephemera, making your own junk journal, but also topics such as journaling for self-care with Amanda Rachel Lee, lifestyle, photography, arts and crafts, maybe with Helen Colebrook, building an Etsy shop or building your creative confidence. I took a class called The Perfect 100 Day Project, Your Guide to Explosive Creative Growth by Rich Armstrong. And I took away a big lesson there. Creativity is very much like a muscle. The more you use it, the more it will grow. Skillshare content is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. The classes have chapters for finding the very specific content that you need and you can share your own project work on the platform so it's, it's very real and very connected. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and motivated and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now back to our lovely envelope. So I've sewn around, I've done little borders around the top flap, the bottom flap and the middle. I've added some 
mica spray and some chalks to my little butterfly and I think that takes the tone down. It gets rid of the white border that I have when I cut out my butterflies. I don't go right to the edge, it makes it quicker and I'm just not that patient. But this way I get a deeper darker colour and those lovely little bits of speckly mica. So that's just drying on the side and I'm taking my finger and I'm going to go over where I will be folding just to glue up the envelope in a second and I'm going to have a little play again with my paint stick so you, again you could do this with pencils you could do it with paint I just take the end of it and add a little bit of this dark brown to the fold and I've found in my set this gorgeous metallic gold and in fact I'm going to be using those on my grungified index cards that are coming up so these are quite malleable you can take your finger and just merge that and I feel that this is it's giving a border but it's also giving just a little bit more emphasis to the edge of the front of our envelope so no particular science get your finger wet maybe with a brush if you want to and I'm going to allow that just to dry I'm going to get a little sentiment ready before I add the butterfly and to do that I'm just going to dive into my mostly Andrea little tub here so I've been cutting a few things out I think I'll use I think I'll use a sentiment in black because I think I think the black really works on these it goes with the dark in the butterfly but whatever works for you and of course you could you could hand write your sentiment you don't need to have digits to do this I just happen to have something so I think what I'll do just cut one of these out and you can see I've just printed it on this basic copy paper I use 90 GSM it's just a tiny bit more than a classic copy paper and that little 10 gram difference going from typical 80 as we have in the UK to 90 just seems to help a bit and I'm going to mat this onto a little piece of dyed curtain so again you've seen me possibly use this in a previous video it's old curtain that was in my mum's house and I've added some fabric paint in shades of green and orange and yellow and brown nothing too scientific and just let that dry so maybe we could have a go at that technique soon So that's all ready to add but I am going to add the butterfly before I add the sentiment because I want the sentiment to be in a particular position relative to the butterfly. I'm going to add a little bit of stamping, so my favourite and I think necessary my ginger Adirondack. So that, go up there, maybe a little one down there for a treat. Okay, not too much, not over the top, and then I'm going to go back with my mica and just spray onto it so that it's not quite so offensively clear, because I do think it works if you have all of these merging and melding into each other. And before I add the butterfly and the sentiment, I'm just going to dry this off and then glue up the flaps. So I want a quantity of glue on the left and right of the bottom flap and that's going to go on top of these middle flaps which we can now turn in and even now I'll say it is a little bit damp and grungy so just going to be delicate so that I don't tear it so that gives us our envelope I'm going to add the butterfly which is now dried so I will add glue just to the middle of the butterfly because I want the wings to stick up. I like that to go just on the left hand side, maybe about there. I'm not going to let the wings of the butterfly jut out to the left of the envelope just in case that matters or is important when we come to use this in a junk journal. And I'm going to add my sentiment down here and I like it to be just slightly tucked underneath the bottom of the butterfly wing so that it all feels like it's part of one picture it's all layered and that gives us interest so that says everything is possible and that can go there 
and its position miraculously brings together that grungy paper that we made and the music paper which I think works really well on here. We've got some colour for interest that contrasts with the, the depth and grunge of this vintage feel and I just really enjoyed making these envelopes. I just wanted to share them with you. If you have enjoyed this and you like playing with paper please do give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already done subscribe come back next week. I hope to see you soon.